Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Ted from Ted's Basement, and I've got a special guest, Mike from Mean Mugging Games with me. Welcome, Mike. Thanks for joining me on the show. Thanks for having me, Ted. Appreciate it. Absolutely. We are going to be teaching you how to play Sorcery Contested Realm, actually playing a game to completion in a way that doesn't get into super complex scenarios so that it's not intimidating. Buckle up, grab some snacks, get a drink. It's going to be fun, but it's also not going to be a quick video. We will try to keep any extra commentary to a minimum. This is going to be fully packed with how-to, educational, scenario-based, actual information that you can learn from. Let's dive right in. I'm going to go, I'm going to pick green. So when you guys jump into TTS, pick a color so that it's just kind of easy to see you and your opponent. My markers, my dice, my name, it's all green and Mike's is all red. At this point, we get to pick a deck. Mike, did you already grab our decks out for us? I did, yes, sir. Okay, cool. He's given me the water precon deck, and I think what you have the earth precon deck. Yes, sir. Okay. The way we set up the game is your avatar goes here in the middle uh, of the grid. You can kind of see it's got like a little rectangle outline, and Mike's got his as well. The spellbook deck is over here on the right hand side. You can see he's grabbing it there with the red hand. And then the Atlas deck goes like directly above that. And you could tell the Atlas, obviously by the different coloring, it's got the orange sorcery. It's also, it also says Atlas if you're able to look close enough and Spellbook says Spellbook. Mike, how do we kick off the game? Is it a dice roll? It is a dice roll. It's a whatever you choose you. High roll, low roll, odds or evens, whatever, whatever your guys' choice is. You were the highest number. So in this case, I'm just going to be the aggressor, I think. So I'm just going to go first. And then what we need to do next is shuffle our decks, both our, uh, our, our sites, which is your atlases, and your Spellbook, which are your spells. So in TTS, you're going to hover your cursor over the deck of choice and hit R a bunch of times. And you guys can see here, I'm zoomed in. You see the deck is kind of spinning. That R is actually shuffling the deck for me. And then you are just going to hover over your deck and you're going to draw three of your spellbook cards and you're going to draw three of your atlas cards. Okay, let's do that now. You can hover your cursor over the deck and hit the number three. So whatever number you hit is how many it's going to pull. So I've got mine... I think right now, Mike, we are deciding if we want to mulligan or not. That is correct. We could mulligan any one or more of any of the cards. Correct. Okay. So I'm just going to mulligan one card and put that on the bottom of my deck. Here's a, a quick tip for you guys new to TTS. If you hold the cursor and grab the deck for long enough, I think it's like an extra second or two, you could pick the whole deck up, drop it on top of the card that you are placing at the bottom, that automatically puts it at the bottom. And then if you just grab a card quickly off the deck, it only pulls one card. So depending on how long you're grabbing the deck depends on if you get one card or if you get multiple. Now for me, I'm not going to do either of those things. I'm just going to hover my cursor over the deck and hit the number one. And that'll just bring one card in. I think it's also important to make sure people know there are no penalties for mulligan in sorcery. That is correct. I am going to keep what I have. And I think we're only at this version of the game. We're only allowed to mulligan the one time you get one chance. You can't just sit here and curate your whole hand <laughs> and constantly mulligan. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So I don't even really have a choice. I have to take what I've got. I can't decide that I'm not mulliganing again. I'm stuck with this hand. Right. Okay. Yep. Since I'm going first, I do not draw on my first turn. What I have in my hand is what I have to play with. Both avatars start in the realm, mm -hmm. but to kick off anything, you have to tap your avatar to play a site. In this case, I'm tapping my avatar and I'm playing a simple village. Okay. And each of these cards have either triggers or Genesis abilities, which is like entering the battlefield. But in this case of the game, will be entering the realm. Simple village reads uh, Genesis. You may pay one mana to summon a foot soldier token here. So my simple village is my mana. So I have one mana. And I'm going to use that one mana to summon what the card says, a foot soldier token. There's a key word here that you mentioned that I want to call out for people. The word Genesis, which is to the left of that arrow, that's the key word. 
to trigger an ability upon the genesis of the card, meaning upon its entry to the battlefield. It doesn't happen any other time. It doesn't happen again. I remember that was something I got confused on originally. That's correct. That's pretty much my turn, and I'm passing to you, Ted. Okay, awesome. I get to draw because it's that is correct. I'm not the first player. Right. And I get to decide if I want to draw from the spell book or the atlas. That is correct. I cannot draw from both. I am going to draw from the spell book this time around. But again, guys, this is up to you. If you want to draw a land to get some more mana and consume more geography on the board, or if you want to you know, bring another spell into your hand. I'm going to play a site. So I'll tap my avatar. Our first site that we play has to be played on the avatar's grid square, correct? It has to be played where the avatar is at. Okay. Be in the middle of, of, of the grid. And and we can see that. So the first time around, you guys can even see it's got a placeholder for that site. Your avatar is the thing casting the spell or, or even conjuring the site. So anything you do from this point on has to touch that site. So you have to build out from where you are. You can't just start on any random square that you want. Right. But I will caveat that if a card tells you you can do something and break a rule, you can. So that's Absolutely. that's another thing. Any any rule we tell you right now could be broken if the card explicitly tells you to do it. But for now, we've got our sites are where our avatars are, and we can start building out from there, but they all have to touch. I now have one mana available to me because I have one site on the board. If you didn't catch it in the first turn, we are using these dice uh, to our left to to help us just keep track of how much mana we have to spend on that turn. I cannot afford to do anything because I only have one mana. So I'm going to turn the turn over to you. I am going to untap my avatar and I am going to either choose to draw from the spell book or the atlas. And in this case, I'm going to draw from the spell book. And then I am going to tap my avatar. All the avatars have tap play or draw a site. So I'm going to tap this, tap my avatar to play or draw a site. And I am going to play my humble village. And I am going to elect to use the mana from that. So I have two total right now. I'm going to use one because I'm going to summon my foot soldier token. So yeah, you're using that Genesis ability that allows you to pay one to summon. I like that ability because you're you, every time you do it, as long as you have the mana, you kind of get a token that goes along with your site. You're not just dropping sites down. And just and just to go on the dropping sites, I played my humble village right here because just like Ted said earlier, I can't just play these these sites anywhere. I have to play them adjacent from this site right here. Another good keyword, adjacent means it's up down left right from the thing that you are being adjacent from but there is another keyword nearby which would then include <laughs> the uh, caddy cornered grid squares not just up down left right but also including those corners correct and with the one mana that i have left i'm gonna play wild boars i could play wild boars because wild boars cost one mana and then there's a little triangle right to the left of it. That's your threshold. Uh, in this case, it's an upside down triangle with a line through it. And it's kind of brown uh, looking color. Mm -hmm. And if you look at my site, Humble Village to the right of it has that symbol. So I meet the threshold requirement and I meet the mana requirement so I can play my boars. And I'm going to pass to you, Ted. The mana cost is the number in the upper left-hand corner. That's the number one with the circle there. If it had a two, then that would be costing two mana. This one happens to have a one. The mana gets consumed as he casts this card. The threshold cost is not a consumption cost. That is just a threshold of criteria that you must meet in order to call the, uh, the creature out on the board. So all it's saying is... You must have at least one earth site to call wild boars out. It doesn't consume the site, tap the site, or anything like that. It The threshold is not consumption, but the mana is consumption. Correct. Okay, so it's my turn. I'm going to go ahead and untap. I do not have any abilities that say at the start of your turn, so there's nothing for me to resolve. I do, however, have an ability on my floodplain that says once 
on your turn, I may do something. And I could choose to do that if I wanted to. Anytime during my turn, that's what it says. But I don't happen to have any sites adjacent to me that would benefit me to flood them. The concept of flooding, as you guys will see if you play more games of sorcery, sorcery is themed around elements of earth, right? So water being one of the elements. So if I'm playing water sites and my opponent in this case is playing earth sites, well, the earth sites don't have water on them. It might behoove me later in the game to flood one of his earth sites. It sort of puts water on it, so to speak, and it will allow some of my creatures other abilities that we might see later. So I just wanted to talk you guys through why would I want to flood a site? Well, maybe because I have a, a, a creature that needs it to be flooded in order to do something, or potentially if I had a spell that could drown one of his creatures, that would only work if the site's water and, and flooded. It wouldn't work if the site's dry. The drowning part wouldn't work. So I think this is a good segue into explaining to everybody we have different regions that are three-dimensional in this game, meaning above the site, which would be your four-legged creatures standing on the, the, the earth or flyers above the earth. That's above the site. You have a region below the site that's going to be your uh, submerged creatures like under the water or burrowed creatures that would be under the earth. And then the third region would be the actual void where there is no site yet played. So on grid number 13 right here, there is no site played between Mike and, and myself. That would mean like 13 is a void. All these would no site, like 12, 14, these are all considered the void. So that would be our third region. Now that we understand regions, let me go ahead and draw. I think I'm going to pull another uh, spell. Notice, guys, I don't have to play a site. I could tap my avatar to draw one, but if I do that, I'm not I'm not playing one. Uh, so you guys kind of have to decide strategy-wise, you know, how you want to do that. I feel like I am going to tap the avatar and play one because I don't want to get to a place where I don't have enough sites on the board to, to you know, maneuver and do things I want to do. Also, I think it's nice to put the site sort of a little bit lower in the grid square so that it leaves a little bit more space in that grid square for the other cards that might need to go on top or below the site. And that's just mm -hmm. kind of um, an etiquette thing, right? There's no, there's not really a rule there as long as you keep the cards in the right stack for the right region. This is more of like an etiquette thing to keep it neat. It keeps it neat. And then also like if we were both playing water, it, it kind of differentiates um, whose uh, lands are, uh, or, or whose or whose sites are whose. Yeah, I could see that because it faces me, but then it's also a little bit toward me on that side of the grid. Okay, so now I do have two mana available to me because I've got two sites on the board. And I do have a creature that I could cast for two mana. I'm going to cast it. And in this case, you can cast the creature on any site that you own. I've cast the Tide Naiads, which they have abilities. They could, uh, you could submerge them. You don't have to, but you could. That would put them below the site into another region. You could also flood the site that you're on and turn it into a water site. There's no reason for me to do that because my sites are already water. But if, if I start to come in contact with Mike's earth sites, maybe I want to do that later. So we'll see. I also think that Submerge brings up another good, solid, like a basic foundation rule we should talk about, which is when you are in a different region from, let's say, an opposing creature, that creature can't touch you. They can't attack you because you're in a different region. So if hypothetically Mike's boars were over here on my site, but I were submerged below the site and see how I went ahead and put my uh, my creature below, he could not attack my creature because I'm actually submerged. His creature is not a submergible type of creature, so they don't have the access to get below deep into that water to even attack me. If I wanted, I could use one of my movements, which will you guys will see more movements once we get more sites on the board, to actually come up and not be submerged anymore. And if I do that... We are now both standing in the same region, and we actually could attack each other. 
that way. So I just want to call out uh, why somebody might want to be submerged or, or burrowed in a different region. That is perfect. You're hitting all the key points. I mean, it, it really comes down to strategy on to submerge, not submerge, burrow, not burrow. So, um, and, and you'll see later on in the game. I enjoy it because it's adding that third dimension, so to speak, to a game that where you're already moving in two dimensions, but now you can mm -hmm. go up and you can go down as well. I also think we should quickly touch on summoning sickness. So, like, uh, yeah. our creatures have summoning si sickness unless they say that they don't. They're not tapped, but they do have summoning sickness. So I believe I cannot attack or move with summoning sickness. Is that right? That is correct, with the exception if I was going to attack you, you can block. Okay, summoning sickness creatures can block. Yeah. They just cannot attack and they cannot move. That's correct. For people mm -hmm. who don't know about summoning sickness, that only lasts for your first turn. So on my next turn, no more summoning sickness. I can go ahead and use this creature however I want to at that point. I am out of mana, and I've already tapped my avatar, so I think I'm done. It's uh, your turn. Okay. I've got two mana right now, so hit two on the dice. I'm going to untap my avatar, and then I'm going to choose to either draw from the spellbook or the atlas. And in this case, I'm going to draw from the spellbook. And I am going to tap my avatar to play Holy Ground. It has a Genesis effect of Genesis, each nearby avatar heals three life. And it's a good segue because we are both at 20 life. Even though that this card says each nearby avatar heals three life, we cannot go the above total life total of 20. 20 is the cap. Yeah, that's, a, that's important. And, you know, we should hit on the win condition now as hmm. well. Uh, yeah, do you want sure. to explain that? Yeah. So, uh, like I said, we are both at 20 health. The main object or objective is to get your opponent's avatar to zero. But once you hit zero, that is not the end of the game. That is called Death's Door. Then my opponent has deal a final death blow to him. To the avatar which is, itself. To the avatar yeah. itself. So any amount of damage, once you're on Death's Door, meaning you've got zero life, any damage when you hit that avatar, now the game's over. Your opponent has lost and you've won the game. On the next turn. So you cannot get your opponent to zero and attack their avatar on the same turn. You have to get them to zero, mm -hmm. let the turn end. Correct. Th at that point, they are on death's door. Mm -hmm. And on your next turn, you are now free and clear to do any amount of damage to that avatar to finally kill them. That's the final death blow. And then you have won the game. That is correct. Okay. There is healing effects like this card right here. Mm -hmm. However... My opponent was at zero. He's on death's door. He cannot gain any health hmm. once he hits zero. So the moment you hit zero, you're at death's door. You cannot get any healing. Correct. Let's see. Where Whose turn are we at? It's still my go. Uh, okay. So now I put down the holy ground. So now I have three total mana. And I am going to play three mana. So I'm going to take this away because my mana resources is gone. And I'm going to play cave trolls right here. Oh, they got burrowing. They have burrowing right now. What so if I put this in play, I have the choice of either keeping them atop of the surface mm -hmm. or I could burrow them below the surface. How what I'm gonna do is because knowing that my opponent is playing water and he's got this awesome special ability that he could flood my sight, he could possibly drown my trolls. If my trolls are underneath the surface and he makes it a water site, well, if you can't breathe underwater, you're gonna perish. Uh, get to the graveyard. I, I want to throw out there the reason we know they can't breathe underwater is they don't have the submerged ability. That's right. If this card hypothetically had burrowing and submerged, well, now they can survive under a site with water or a site without water. That's correct. Okay, makes sense. So burrowing so, goes under earth, submerged goes under water. Yep. So in this instance, I'm just going to keep my cave trolls at the top of the surface, and I'm going to pass to you. Okay. Let me untap and bring my mana back. I am going to take a sight instead of a spell this time. 
And keep in mind, guys, I get to pull a card from either deck at the beginning of my turn. So I did not have to use my avatar's draw sight ability. I didn't have to tap for that. The, me drawing a sight is just part of me picking my first card this turn. But you cannot pick from both decks at the start of your turn. you got to pick which deck you want to draw from. Now, for some reason, if I want to draw a second sight, I could tap my avatar right now and use the draw sight ability. But notice, by doing that tap, I cannot play a site. I can't use the other ability for flooding. So you just got to be mindful on your strategy uh, how you want to use those avatar abilities. I'm going to throw down Summer River site. Notice, guys, this has a genesis on it that says, look at your next spell. You may put it on the bottom of your spell book. So for those of you that are kind of familiar with magic, this is sort of like the scry ability because it's allowing me to take a quick little look here, and I think, is it Alt-Shift? Take the card off the top first, then Alt-Shift. Okay. In Tabletop Simulator, it's not as easy as in person. You don't want to just, like, flip the card off and show your opponent what you just <laughs> looked at. So, uh, as Mike said, take the card off by hand here, and then Alt-Shift shows it to me. He cannot see it. Now I can decide if I want to put it back on the top. Or put it on the bottom. So this water deck is allowing me a little bit of control, similar to like blue magic. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it on the top. Okay, I've got my third site out, which means I do have three mana. So I'm gonna update my dice. And by the way, all I'm doing is I'm hovering over the dice and hitting the number, and it just sets the dice to that number. It's very very easy. I think I want to call out deep sea mermaids. And I'm going to throw them up here. So Deep Sea Mermaids has the Submerge ability, as we saw with my other creature. It also has a Genesis ability, which allows me to draw the bottom-most spell. So Genesis, again, it only happens once, and it happens when you put the card onto the board. Because that's the Genesis of the card, if you will, the Genesis of the creature. Um, Mike, I assume this means that I can pull the bottom-most spell from my deck. That is correct. Correct. Okay. Um, do you know a fancy way to get that out of? <laughs> that is the one that I always have difficulty with. So right now, no. The answer is no. So I'm just going to close my eyes. I'll let you flip the bottom card and okay. Go ahead and grab it. Th this yep. is all for uh, learning purposes <laughs> anyway. So we can we can do that very easily. So I'm going to put this in my hand and then flip it. Make sure it's always pointing you because. If it's not pointing to you and it's in your hand, I think maybe the opponent can also see it. Here's the card I just pulled from the bottom of the deck. Look how powerful that was. Just that Genesis ability alone. Again, it's like more of that blue magic control allowing me to start drawing extra cards. Uh, and I haven't even done anything yet this turn other than play the, the creature and put my sight out. I did put my sight out, right? I did not tap my avatar, so I got to do that. I think I'm going to go ahead and, and do some movement. Before my turn is over, at any point, I can decide I can move one of my creatures adjacent to the site that I'm currently on. I'm going to move the Tide Naiads up one. And you can only move one space, by the way. Again, unless the card says otherwise. Hmm. And again, with the adjacent, you cannot move on the diagonal. And whenever you move, you, uh, you're going you're gonna to tap and move. Yes. Yeah. So moving and attacking are both things that tap your card. You could do either or. You could also do them both at the same time in one shot. So if I had an enemy sitting here in this grid square 14, I could have moved and attacked at right. the same time. So you could do both or either or how, whatever you need to do. But you can only you can only go the one square. Oh, you can also move your avatar. Yeah, we we haven't talked about that, but you you can do that. I I, I think. Uh, oh, I can't do it when it's tapped though. That's right. Right. So I already tapped it doing something, so I cannot move it this turn. So I'm gonna turn it back over to you. All right. So uh, I am going to update my dice total. We're at three mana, showing three. I'm gonna untap my avatar, and. At this point, I've got three spells in my hand and no sights, and I've only got three mana. To me, in this game, you want to play the mana curve. So I'm going to opt to draw from my atlas to draw a sight. 
And I'm going to tap my avatar, and I'm going to play my site. I'm going to play it right here, and it's Vanish Hills. This does not have a Genesis effect. However, this site does have a uh, an effect that says range units atop this site have plus one range. Range is a new ability we haven't seen yet. So that that's allowing you sort of like a reach, right? You, you could attack somebody one square away from you if the keyword in your text box would say ranged in it like mm -hmm. uh how the tide naiads have submerged um mm -hmm. range uh minions would say it would say range we're not granting range to creatures that don't have it we're just adding plus one to an, any creatures with existing range on it. it yes sir got exactly. it so if it were a creature that maybe had like a bow and arrow or something and its ability would have been to you know, shoot you with that arrow and it, let's say it already had a, a, a one range. So it could shoot that arrow one square away. It does not need to move to your square to attack you. This now gives you extra range. And in that scenario, you'd actually be able to shoot that arrow two squares away. That's pretty powerful because right. now you don't even have to move to that creature. You can just right. shoot them. But I think with ranged, we are still talking adjacent to that creature you're not again you're not doing it on the diagonal right that's correct it's either adjacent uh north east you know northeast southwest southwest got it yeah mm -hmm. yes sir um that yep. said if something was in the way you can't shoot through that thing correct that is correct you have to shoot there in front of you so you need line of sight essentially if another creature was in between you and your target you would end up hitting that other creature instead in that case scenario, if you had two minions in this site, mm -hmm. one being your minion and uh, the other being the enemy's minion, as the attacker, you get to choose which target you want to shoot. That's good to call out. And I, I think we saw that with basically with anything that is ranged, like even a spell, mm -hmm. like a projectile, like anything that you're you know throwing casting if you land on a grid square with multiple targets you as the attacker get to pick the target because you're the thing that's aiming right okay that's correct um and then you know i played my cave trolls here it has summoning sickness so i can't move um however i am going to move my boars just for the heck of it over here okay and i'm going to pass turn all righty untap and reset here Bring my mana back in. I think I am going to... I'm going to play this site. So I'm going to tap my avatar to, to play it. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, interesting site. It's Maelstrom. This one does have a at the start of your turn triggered ability. It says right at the top there or at the bottom of the card that you may pull each minion in the in this body of water one step so let's there's a couple things to unpack there the body of water is any set of site water sites that are contiguously touching each other right so i've got four of them they are all water here that means this is my body of water now if i happen to use a, an ability let's say like tide naiads Let's say I, I, you know, I step them onto Mike's humble village over here. I could use this ability to make that site a water site. It says right there on the card. As soon as I do that, that site is now part of my body of water because it's actually touching my sites. It's contiguous, right? That means that Maelstrom now has a larger reach than it used to have. So if, you know, again, now understanding what a body of water is, if you read it, you may pull each minion in this body of water one step. One step obviously just means one uh, grid space movement. So now you can get movement out of your own creatures that way without even having to use their ability to move. I can also negate some movement. Like if, <laughs> if his boars were on a water site right now, I could pull it right back. He tries to move away right. and I could pull it right back. So lots going on with this site. It also says the word may. You don't have to. So you get to pick and choose which creatures. They're, they don't all have to get pulled. There was a lot to unpack. It's really powerful, and I think that might be because it's a unique site, and we mm -hmm. haven't talked about what that means yet, but we've got four rarities and sorcery so far in the game so far. We've got 
ordinary, which is your most common, then exceptional, then elite, and then unique. And so unique is actually like the highest echelon of rarity. I tend to think that at least in sorcery, that also may mean that we may find special powers and some, you know, extra powerful cards at that unique level. I'm not saying it has to be because it's really just defining rarity. But in this case, I think that uh, we do see a really powerful card because it is unique. The rarities also limit how many of each card that go in each deck, right? If you wanted to construct your own deck, how does that break down? Starting with the uh, ordinary, you're only allowed to have a max copy of four of the same cards in your deck. If it was exceptional, that would be three. Okay. If it's elite, it will be two, and a unique will be one. I think that might be where they came up with the word unique because it's unique in your deck. Right. <laughs> I could be wrong, but it seems to make sense. Okay, so I've played a site. Oh, by the way, I, I have four mana now, guys, because I've got four sites down. So don't forget to make sure you update your mana. I think I will draw. I'm going to do one more site. So I'll have that in my back pocket for the next time around. So you guys can see, Mike can't see this, but I have like magic, which are like spells. They're not uh, creatures, but I also have uh, beasts, which obviously is a creature. So I'm, I'm sitting here trying to decide if I want, because when you cast magic, you know, that dissipates. That's not a permanent card on the board. You get the ability of the magic spell, and then you, you go ahead and put it in your graveyard. I'm going to cast a, uh, a creature, the sea serpent, for four. So it's going to spend all my mana. And I'm going to put it uh, right up here on Maelstrom. I'm going to go aggressive and get it nice and close maybe uncomfortably close to my <laughs> opponent's lands. Uh, it's got summoning sickness. I'm going to decide to have it submerged uh, when I when I bring it to the board. The hot key you could hit here is the uh, letter U, and that puts it underneath a card really quickly. So if you guys are in TTS, uh, you can hit U and just stick it underneath another card there. I'm going to move Deep Sea Mermaids actually back one. And my thought is keep something close to my avatar in case I need to defend it or something like that. And there I'll leave go. Tide Nyads there. And I don't think I can do anything else. So it's your turn now. I just want to expound on something on Sea Serpent. Um, where it says submerge, comma, waterbound. Mm. Uh, waterbound, it's not allowed to go onto my site. It is constricted to the bound of, of the water. So it cannot go onto a land site. Okay. Yeah. And now if I chose to somehow turn one of these sites into a water site, I then extend well, the ability for Sea Serpent to move into it. That is correct. Okay. Yep. Um, I was I was going to say, so, that, you know, just like water bound, there's also cards in the game that's, that are land bound. So they can't oh, even go okay. on the water. So. I didn't know that. Yep. That's good. Mm-hmm. Um, so all I did was untap my avatar, untap my boars. I've got four mana, and I am going to draw from my atlas. And I'm going to tap my avatar to play a humble village right here. You're getting real close to me. <laughs> and that gives me five mana. And I'm feeling a little spicy, a little saucy. <laughs> so I'm going to use the five mana and I'm going to play my Amazon Warriors. She is a five, five. Oh, let's talk about power uh, real quick. I don't think we've hit that yet because we haven't mm -hmm. gotten to the point where we're ready to like attack somebody. But in the upper right hand corner, there's a five with a shield and the swords. So that means we have five power. The fact that we see a shield and swords mean that that power is like our attack. It's also our defense. It's it's what's required to kill us as well. I have seen cards that don't have the shield, but I, I don't remember what the condition was. If it maybe it was just a spell or something. Um, I don't know if you want to elaborate any more on that or if that's maybe it's enough for now for the basic understanding. Uh, for, for the basics, that that's a good segue okay. later on to another episode. <laughs> okay. So you've got a nice heavy hitter with uh, five power sitting right next to my avatar. I'm not I'm not real comfortable at the moment. 
Let me let me just move my cave trolls right here. I'm gonna keep my boars here. And yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm gonna pass to you. Oh, let me make sure I untap. Can't get it too too ahead of myself here. Okay. The question is, where do I want to stick this site? I kind of feel like I'm gonna go I'm gonna I'm gonna connect us in the center of the board so that way we're gonna start seeing some battles happen. Uh probably a little bit easier because we're like we're all right here now. So we've got that site. So now I've got five mana that I could spend. And let's take a look. This has a Genesis. Staying within the body of water, move a target unit one step. A mm -hmm. unit is any uh, permanent creature or avatar card on the board. That's correct. But a unit is not a site, correct? A unit is not a site. That I, ca is I, can, I cannot move the site. The reason that unit is an important distinction is some cards might not say unit. They might say move a minion. Mm -hmm. Minions are all your beasts and creatures on the board, but avatars are not minions. That's correct. So, you know, unit is a more powerful thing than minion because th now I could actually move my avatar. And I think I'm going to go ahead and use that Genesis ability to move my avatar one to the right and get it a little bit farther away from your Amazon warriors. Because it's my Genesis, that does not tap the avatar. Because the avatar did not use its own ability to do movement yet. Correct? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, oh, but technically, because I did play this site, I mean, I have to tap my avatar to play the site in general. So right. the yep. avatar's tap, but I think it's important to call out that when another card's ability moves the unit, that doesn't tap the unit. That's correct. So I've got my Deep Sea Mermaids here to help me uh defend but i'm i'm getting a little little weary um i'm gonna pull a spell i'm gonna hope i get a creature i have a relic i'm gonna cast this i don't even know what it does but i'm just gonna cast it because i don't want to use my magic <laughs> so it says if cast conjure this under an allied water site of an opponent's choice when sunken Treasure is carried to the surface. Its controller sacrifices it and draws two cards under an allied water. So that's that could be my own. Yep. Okay. So we are gonna we're gonna play that card. Um, go ahead and and pick which water site it should go below. Well, I think I'm gonna say it's gonna go below the undertow. Okay. And now I want to read the rest of it again. When the sunken treasure is carried to the surface, its controller sacrifices it and draws two cards. My question for you is, how is it carried to the surface? Does it need to be a submerged creature to have it needs access to, to it? it? That's correct. It needs to be a submerged creature that's able to pick up the treasure, and then the next turn you would surface and sacrifice it. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the U key to put it under. It's in that under underwater region under this site. Mm -hmm. Um. Luckily, because you're playing Earth, I don't think you're going to have any creatures that could access this because you probably don't have creatures with Submerge. That's correct. Yeah. The only <laughs> trick is safe. I don't know that I want to go there to get it because then I'm near a whole bunch of your creatures that could attack me. So he's smart by putting it in a place where I probably don't want to go. Mm -hmm. uh, I did spend three mana, so now I have two left. Oh, I, I did forget to use my at the start of your turn Maelstrom ability. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind as you're learning these new games i do this a lot i forget to check like my at start of turn type of abilities and stuff what i probably would have done is is pulled oh no i can't i couldn't i couldn't anyway because none of his sites are water yet but I, if right. they were i would have pulled some of them technically i could pull one of mine if i want to move it um but i don't so i'm going to leave it be and turn pass turn back to you okay so I'm going to check my board really quick and see if I have anything tapped. Uh, my cave trolls are tapped, so I'll untap my cave trolls, and I'll untap Avatar of Earth. I'm going to look at my hand and contemplate to see if I want to draw from the spellbook or the atlas. And in this case, I think I'm going to draw from the spellbook. All right, so um, so I drew from the spellbook, and now I'm contemplating what I'm going to play. Um, I think this is a good time to... 
uh, teach a new mechanic. Um, okay. Actually, you kind of already went over one, which was treasure. Uh, but I'm going to use my five mana, and I am going to play Spear of Destiny, and I'm going to attach it to my Amazon Warriors. Let, let's real quick uh, let everybody know we don't know why. There's like this little glitch on Spear of Destiny. I cannot read it. Therefore, you guys cannot read it. It shows as a white card or like a manila okay. colored card. But it does that. Yeah. But Mike, you can see it, correct? I can. Yeah. So um, it's a normal card. I ignore the fact that it's blank. Just, you know, bear with us. It is a normal card. We don't know why there's a glitch here, but we're not going to worry about solving it in the video. He's Mike's just going to read it for us. I just want you guys to know why it looks like that. Gotcha. Uh, Spear of Destiny. It's a five cost. There is no threshold requirement to hit. Um, okay. It says it's a unique weapon of divine retribution. And it says bear has tap. Throw Spear of Destiny at any minion anywhere. It teleports to that minion's location and kills it. So the spear teleports to that location. It's like you're that throwing it. Got it. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you have to you, you can't use it on summoning sickness, and you can't use it if you're tapped. Just like your regular attack ability, you you wouldn't be able to use. But that your Amazon correct. warriors don't have summoning sickness because they've been out since your last right. Time. So you could throw mm -hmm. that right now. Just because mm -hmm. your Amazon warriors holding the spear doesn't mean they can't do their regular attack though. So right. if I had a minion uh, on uh, an adjacent square. Or inside square number 17 right here. He could choose to hit me and not throw the spear. That would mean he's still holding the spear for the next time around. But if he choose, let's say I was in, let's say I had a creature here in 18 and he threw it at me. That spear is going to drop on 18. He will no longer have that spear in hand. So the next creature that comes in 18 could decide to pick it up. And what I'm going to do, just like he was saying, I'm not going to use Spear of Destiny. Spear of Destiny is just a test of the Warriors. The Warriors are going to come into his space and hit his sight for five. So I think uh, this is a good time to describe the attack uh, situation and how I lose life and that whole thing. You can attack somebody's sight, the actual sight. You could attack somebody's avatar themselves you could attack the creatures or the minions mm -hmm. if you attack a site or an avatar that would do the damage to to you okay and you are the avatar by the way when we're playing right. we are the avatar um so a site and an avatar would reduce your life total up here mm-hmm could I have defended that site if I wanted with an adjacent creature? You could defend with your, your minion if okay. you wanted to. And when the attack happens, um, damage is dealt simultaneously. Oh, yeah. So if I decided to do the block, which I didn't, but if I decided to come over here and block, which, by the way, guys, you can block uh, one grid adjacent from you. And mm -hmm. because I'm right next door, that's one that's one square adjacent. So I can right. move over and do the block. If I were already here, I could also do the block. That's correct. Obviously, if you're in the same grid, you could block within that grid. So if I decided to come over here and block with my deep sea mermaids, we we attack, we hit each other for the damage at the same time. So I only have a one power. He has a five power. Sorry if I can get my mouse on it. So I, I would instantly die. I don't have enough power to to kill his warriors and that would be it my minion would go to the graveyard mm -hmm. um i'm not going to defend I, I took the five damage my thought process was leave the creature here to kind of protect the uh avatar um which technically doesn't matter yet but it matters when i'm on death's door okay so then I am going to use my trolls and hit you on this site for three. I'm going to risk. I'm going to take it. Oh, there we go. I'm not going to defend. All right. I was hoping he was going to block because <laughs> I was after that. I was then going to go and attack with my foot soldiers here or here. Um, 
But uh, with that being said, I've got different plans. Um, so I am going to tap my foot soldier, and I'm just going to move him over here. Okay. And I will pass turn to you. Okay. So we've got some interesting things going on now that he is in my body of water. Mm -hmm. Because at the start of my turn, I can pull each minion one step. So I would like to pull Amazon Warriors uh, one step this way, away from my avatar. Okay. And... I think I'd like to pull my sea serpent uh, one step this way. Mm -hmm. The way that we understand this, by the way, is it doesn't tell us the direction. So until we are told otherwise, we are allowing the pull one step uh, to be to pull it, you know, anywhere in the body of water. This is one of those caveats where we might be told you have to pull it toward ma towards Maelstrom, but I don't know that at this point it, it doesn't actually say it uh pull towards maelstrom so that's kind of how we're rolling with it okay so my mm -hmm. movement now was to submerge the the uh naiads which also taps them because that's considered the movement mm -hmm. and uh sea serpent was pulled here so sea serpent did not tap yet so okay. this will be an example of i was able to use an ability of another card to get sea serpent to actually move twice right so i can move it over here that taps it and, and they could submerge later. I'm still not good at this yet. Like, make sure you get through your upkeep sort of thing. Like, you're resetting everything. Uh, putting my mana back would have been part of that. Pulling a card would be part of that. The uh, Avatar of Water, Did I, I didn't untap it yet either, did I? Nope, it's not untapped. So that would be part of that. I've got my five mana. Amazon Warriors is has been, you know, pulled into this, this water site. I could use Drowned to submerge a target minion uh, if able. And that costs three mana. So I'm going to cast Drowned onto Amazon Warriors. And I'm going to pull them down below. I'm going to submerge them. But because they don't have Submerge, they, they, they're done. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And since the Spear of Destiny was attached to the Amazon Warriors... Fear of Destiny is now it's just submerged. Oh, it is actually submerged. Mm -hmm. But okay. because so, you, having submerged, are able to retrieve the artifact. Oh, because I I have the ability to submerge, but you don't. Mm -hmm. So even if you brought creatures over to this uh, grid square, this site, they don't have the ability to reach down into that into that region and get it. That's right. Okay. That's As correct. of this moment, cave trolls cannot kill Sea Serpent. So the next turn, Sea Serpent could actually submerge, pick up the spear, and the sunken treasure. So there's a lot mm -hmm. going on under the water over here in uh, <laughs> in grid number 13. Yep. I've got two mana left. I've got another magic I could cast for two. It's a Riptide. Target mm. water site will pull an above ground unit it's adjacent to. And then I can also draw a card. Oh, since my uh, Tide Naiads are submerged, I can't use that to pull them into here because they're not above ground. But if I were thinking ahead, I would have pulled the, the Tide Naiads while they were still above water, would have pulled mm -hmm. them, and then submerged them. So technically, I had the combo to get it done, but I did not think ahead enough to do it in this turn. So it does pay to, to think a little bit. Um, ahead on, on your combos and stuff. So instead, I think, oh, let me make sure we get drowned into the graveyard. That that spell has been spent. Instead, I think I will, you know, I think I will, I'll, I'm just not going to use Riptide. I, yeah. I could easily pull an opponent card like his to one of my other water sites, but if I do that, I'm just bringing it closer to my avatar and I'm probably saving him a turn. Because he might want to move off this square because he's sitting there right on my sea serpent. So I, I don't I don't know that it helps me to use the Riptide. So what I will do is I will cast Polar Bears for two mana. Ooh, very nice. Yes. So now Great Genesis ability. Yes. And I'm <laughs> taking the mana off the board, the the 
the dice there just to register that I have no mana left. Mm -hmm. Um, this is, is technically not a Genesis ability. It just says it's just an ability. So it says can Mm -hmm. move as if the top and bottom of the edges of the realm were connected. One of my favorite abilities in the game, they could walk to the other side of the board as if they are, as if the two sides were connected, just the top and the bottom. I'm going to flood an adjacent site to my body of water until, and it says until I do so again. So I assume let's just double check that if I tap my avatar and flood one of your sites, even on my next turn, when I untap, it's still flooded unless I choose to flood something else. That is correct. Okay. So I can tap this on my next turn to play or draw a site. And I, and I don't lose the fact that I flooded your site. So let me tap the avatar. Uh, I can only flood a site that is adjacent to my body of water, it mm-hmm. says. Um, so it's not like I could do grid number seven, but I could do like eight or 12 or 17. Yep. Okay. I'm going to do eight. Okay. So I will throw a little marker on it just to let us know that is a uh, flooded site. I did a lot this turn. I think that is good. I think I'm I'm done. All right. Um, I am already untapped, uh, but my foot soldier here needs to be untapped. And my cave trolls. And the spear's underneath the water right now, so I can't retrieve it at all. I've got and, one, two, three, four, five. And and this is a great example. I'm zooming in on, on grid 13 of why having the uh, the etiquette of the, the cards being layered properly according to the region that the card is living in really helps tell you without even any question, we could see the spear is in, in that lower region. We can see that the cave trolls are not in that lower region. They're not below the site. So they can't touch, they can't access the spear. So um, same thing with the sunken treasure. It's below everything. So for me, at first glance, it might look complex, but it's actually not. If you're above the site, you're above it. If you're below the site, you're below it. Simple enough. Yep. Um, now I'm going to pop the plate if I'm going to draw from my atlas or my spell book, and I'm going to draw from my spell book. I wish I could show my hand because it's a pretty <laughs> cool card. Um, so now, let's see here. I've got five mana. I am going to maybe just try to clear clear some stuff out because I know that my, to me, I think my cave trolls are in danger regardless. I mean, I could retreat back here, but, uh, you know, like I said, I'm feeling saucy today. So uh, I'm going to hit your polar bears. I'm going to attack your polar bears with my trolls. So I think what I want to do is, because you've got three power, polar bears have two. I want to block that attack with the deep sea mermaids. Mm -hmm. You can also, you can double block in this game. Just the Oh, Um, so I would... I would lose both my minions if I chose the double block, but I would take your cave trolls down with them. That is correct because your bears are two. Your mermaids are one, two plus one equals three. And remember, they, they, they strike each other simultaneously. Makes sense. I'm going to, I'm going to not do that. I'll sacrifice deep sea mermaids. I'll take the hit Mm -hmm. and, and they will perish and go into the graveyard. Okay. So, Right now, because he did do that, mm-hmm. you know, he you struck my trolls for one, you know, and then I dealt more damage than you. That's why you're dead. Mm-hmm. Now, my trolls were a 3-3. Three, three. Mm-hmm. They are now a 2-2, two, two, just at this point of time. So just, just for the, the remainder of the turn. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, I, I, that, that's a good distinction because I didn't know if each tack, attack was like its own damage resolve and then the minion is back to full power like instantly but you're saying no no it doesn't it doesn't go back to its full power until the turn is over that is correct i'm gonna move the boars here and i'm gonna pass turn okay so let me do a better job of my upkeep so let me get my stuff untapped 
I'm going to get my mana back here on the board. I've got one, two, three, four, five mana. So let me get that set. Let me not forget that I've got Maelstrom with a, at the start of your turn ability. I would like to use that Maelstrom ability to pull your cave trolls one step in this direction. I am also going to use that ability to pull the tide naiads one step in this direction. Mm -hmm. That's all I will do as far as the maelstrom ability. Yeah. I will draw a spell and I will tap my avatar to flood uh, site number 12. Let me, sorry, bring your boards back up top. <laughs> yep. Um, I moved it because, like we talked about before, you, you, when you flood another site, according to this avatar's ability, the previous site you flooded is no longer flooded. So you can only kind of flood one site at a time with this avatar. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move and attack with Tide Naiads against your wild boars because I think they would just kill each other. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do that. That attack resolves, and they both go to the graveyard. I am going to attack your cave trolls with the sea serpent. Yep. They'll go to graveyard. I'm then going to spend four mana to cast another sea serpent submerged uh -oh. yep. on 13, which means they then pick up the spear. Mm -hmm. Can they do that with summoning sickness still? Okay, so that spear is now being held by my sea serpent, and then I will pick up the sunken treasure. That It's just picked up. So I can hold the spear and the sunken treasure. Oh, yeah. There's no limit to how many things I could be holding. Really. Nope, okay. you could, if you had 100 artifacts, you could have 100 artifacts attached to you. Very cool. Okay, so let me just um, make sure I drop these below the site again. Okay, so now I've got access to those artifacts that I wanted. I've taken out a couple creatures. I think that I would like to move the polar bears and attack your foot soldier token at the same time. Because remember, we've got this ability for the top and the bottom of the edges of the realm to, to act like they're connected only for polar bears. So he's going to basically move around, come to the top, and attack... Um, the foot soldiers, uh, one powered token. Knowing this, the bears are a uh, two power. Yes. My foot soldiers are a one power. Mm -hmm. However, most avatars are one powers. I have not tapped my avatar last mm. turn. She is untapped. So I can, if I want to, block with my avatar of Earth because she has an ability that says, you have plus one power for each nearby Earth site. Yes. Which would. So she's one, two, three, four, counting her one power. So she's a four, four. Nearby, like we said before, would, would include these that I'm showing you guys with the mouse. So uh, grid space two, seven, eight, nine, and four. And so you're adding those three. Mm -hmm. In addition, one. As, a, as a plus. So you're getting plus three power. Because those correct. are all these. This is the area that's considered nearby. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. I'm gonna block. The bears will die. However, damage is dealt simultaneously. Those bears still strike my avatar. So I will For the take two. two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you. So because we struck the avatar, not a minion, two life actually comes off your your life total. That's correct. Okay. Okay. Um, Mama came in and saved the day. Yes. Now, these bears are ordinary, which means I don't know how many are in the precon deck, but there could be up to four. Mm, the, that's the, correct. Those are, that's kind of an interesting uh, ability for an ordinary to be able to traverse the realm like that, like these two uh, edges are connected. That That's kind of really cool. I, mm -hmm. I do like that. So we got a summoning sickness sea serpent here, so can't do anything with that. I got one mana left. I got nothing that could be a one. So then uh, pass to you. So I'm going to draw from the spell book. Okay. And I've got five mana. I'm going to use all of it. And okay. I'm going to play I'm going to play Earthquake. 
Earthquake reads, rearrange sites within a 2x2 two two region, carrying along everything of normal size. Then burrow all minions and artifacts on those on those sites if able. That seems pretty powerful. So w- which 2x2 uh, two two region are you going to rearrange? I'm going to rearrange this 2x2 two two region right here. When you do that, you carry along everything of normal size and then burrow all minions. But if you let's say you take... You know, like everything in grid 13? Actually, if you had something that didn't have um, Submerge on there... Then it would it would take it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Like if my polar bears yep. were there. Mm-hmm. Be- because they can't be burrowed, so they'd be done. But what this has done, though... It could, gonna, potentially gonna, could break up my body of water. Can you... Oh, I think we exa- can actually, that's what, yeah, that's what it's doing. Yeah, look, you could drag oh, there you a hole. <laughs> I don't know. If, cool. Did you know that one? It, you grab your cursor and you make like a square and then whatever's within that square. No, I did not. So you learn something new every day. I, I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can see me do it or not. People oh, yeah, I see it. Can. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming that's what you wanted to do. You wanted to take that stuff and throw it on number eight. I did. But uh, yeah. And so and this did break up some sort of body of water. He still has this right here. Yeah, so but, uh, it's, that's all connected, is... but yeah, 12 is not part of the Maelstrom pole now. Right. It's still flooded. It's just not still connected. Still flooded. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was my turn. Okay. Pass to you. One, two, three, four, five. Let me reset my mana to five. Um, I am going to pull a card and then on my upkeep ability do i want to pull anything i don't i don't think so um let me untap my avatar oh i didn't untap this let's bring the sea serpent to the surface Mm -hmm. which it brings the spear with it and the sunken treasure now now that the sunken treasure is brought to the surface we this can resolve so the controller sacrifices it draws two cards so we'll just we'll Mm -hmm. drop this into the graveyard I will take it, it said two cards. Yeah. Does it specify which card? So you could either draw from the spell book uh, or the Atlas. That's, that's pretty powerful. I'm gonna do one site and I'm mm-hmm. gonna do one spell. That that's pretty powerful. I like that again, we're seeing that control in, in that uh in the water uh deck there. I think what I'm gonna do is uh play Autumn River. And so I'll tap my avatar to be able to, to play the site. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to do that. Look at the top spell and decide if I want to keep it on the top or not. So that's, again, taking a card off and hitting Alt-Shift to look at it so your opponent cannot see it. I will leave it on the top because I like it. <laughs> and... Um, we are going to start doing some damage. Let's just throw the spear at the token. Okay. Okay, so I threw it uh, over here at the token. The token's in the graveyard, and then the spear just drops on the site. Mm-hmm. That taps my serpent. Question, if, uh, if I freeze a minion with a spear, it can't throw the spear, right? That's correct. So freeze is not simply just I can't walk. Like you can't. Free, yeah, freeze is like another form of disabled. Okay. The freeze spell I have only works on minions. So that's another key word to watch out for. Your avatar mm-hmm. is not a minion. Now, if it said freeze right. unit, that would include the avatar. Yes, sir. I'm going to spend four mana and call out two creatures with that. Because one's, okay. one's going to cost three and one's going to cost one. So I'm going to drop my mana down to one. Now I just have to decide which uh, which site I want to put them on. I think I'm going to do the Coral Reef Kelpie on this site. Mm-hmm. Submerged. And then I'm going to do the Swamp Buffalo, which is only a one mana cost. Uh, this is a four-legged creature because I don't see any submerge or anything like that. So this is mm-hmm. this this one could actually walk off of my water sites and on to your dry sites if it wanted. Right. Is, is the way I understand that. Mm-hmm. So I And and just and let you know too, your your Kelpie can also do that too. It could still go on, on land. 
It's just this, the sea serpent can't because oh, it that's has right. water yeah, the bound. Yeah, sea serpent's water bound. Yeah, it throws me off because I wouldn't think of that Kelpie as a land creature. But if you look close, <laughs> right. it actually has hoofs. Mm-hmm. It actually does. So they've oh, actually it does, yeah. they've matched the artwork to the ability. Like that's really cool that you can actually mm-hmm. see it too. That it that it yep. can go on land. It's not water bound. Nice. That that's a very useful it can go on both. And it can submerge. Mm-hmm. Oh, so I was deciding while we were looking at that, I was deciding which site to put the buffalo on. I'm gonna I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna put it on this site. I'm gonna load it up. <laughs> All right. I know you could hit it with the spear if you wanted, but um I'm loading it up. Gotcha. One mana left. Uh, can't spend anything, so it is your turn. I am going to draw from the Atlas. I am going to pick up the Spear of Destiny with my avatar. Okay. I'm just waiting for that to get thrown. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to tap. Okay. Play a Rustic Village. Okay. Right here. That's going to give me six mana you're expanding out i am going to use one mana to go down the five for a foot soldier token and with five mana i am also going to use four of it to go down the one to play uh, oops house arn bannerman uh, and it says other nearby allies have plus one power. I got, yeah, so that's anything in this region, guys. So from 16, 11, 12, 13, and 18, also including 17 itself, that's nearby. And with one mana left, I'm going to use it to play some boars here. Yeah, so that's now a three powered. Mm-hmm. Those boars, yeah. And then your tokens are also a little beefier, too. That's right. I'm yep. going to pass turn, uh, pass turn to you. Okay. Let's get everything untapped here. I'm a little surprised you didn't throw the spear. But, I mean, I see, I kind of see, I think, what you're doing there. Um, Let's draw a spell. And then don't forget about our at the start of your turn ability. Which you know what I don't think I want to use it. Yeah, yeah I don't I don't I'm not going to use that. Okay. I'm gonna spend three. Like one two three four five six. I only have six mana, right? To cast a magic spell called Ice Lance. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. This is gonna shoot a piercing projectile. It's gonna deal three, then two, then one damage to up to one unit at each of the first three locations along its path. So that means that I can deal the damage three to a unit and then two to a different unit and then one to a different unit. But it's got to be along that that path. And that path is a line of sight path from the avatar. Because the avatar is the thing in the game that's casting the magic. So it can't come from magic spells like that cannot come from any other minion on the board because the avatar is the only one that has the ability to actually cast magic. Uh, Almost. There there are minions in the game that have spell caster. Okay. That's the card telling you that you've got that extra ability then. Right. Yes, sir. Mm Mm-hmm. Um. So let's drop the uh, Ice Lance spell out so we could see that I'm playing it. <laughs> I'm going to hit the Boars with three. That'll take the Boars out. Then I'll hit the Bannerman with two. That'll take the Bannerman out, which then I think leaves the Foot Soldier alone with only one power because the Bannermen are off the board now and then f- do the final blow of one damage to the Foot Soldier. That's correct. So that that magic spell basically went across the line of sight like this. Obviously you saw the, those three go into their graveyards and then the uh, magic spell also goes in the graveyard cause it is, it's all spent. Mm-hmm. So let me take three mana off my, uh, really I think I, I feel like that was a plan. good move. Yeah. That, that was think, a very good move. <laughs> yeah. Your foot soldier over here is only one, right? I don't, I don't see like a, a counter on it. Yep. Just 
It's a plain old vanilla one. Okay, so let's let's attack it with a swamp uh, buffalo. Yeah. Swamp buffalo has one left. So really, these serpents aren't doing me a whole ton, unless attack sight on grid space seven with mm -hmm. both serpents to hit you for eight. And then if you take me out, you take me out. But at least I got my eight in. Right. <laughs> so now he's down to 10. Um, based on what I can do, I could be wrong here. We might be corrected later if somebody watches this. But there is actually uh, a little bit of, there's like a bunch of rocks next to the Riptide actually in the artwork. Okay. So. And you are sh and it's showing people in the water. So it's kind of almost like the wave, the riptide that hit the rock actually pulled someone off the rock and into the water. Mm -hmm. So I kind of think that that's, again, another great example of the artwork reflecting the ability. I would like to pull the avatar one over. Okay. Like it says, your, your spear comes with you. That's right. Um, let's, let's do the actual, so I cast the Riptide. Let me take the two away. Riptide then, uh, goes in my graveyard cause it's just a spell. Mm -hmm. I got one mana. I think that's it for my turn. Okay. So I am going to untap. Got nothing else on tap. I've got six mana and then I'm going to draw from the Atlas. I'm going to tap my avatar. To play Holy Ground. I'm going to play Holy Ground. Ooh, it's not near anything, huh? Mm. Play Holy Ground here. And it says Genesis, each uh, nearby avatar heals three life. Um, since my avatar's here, it's definitely not nearby, so I cannot heal three that, life. That would heal me, too, if my avatar that was would, there. Okay. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Um. So now I have seven mana total. And all of these minions are on my site. Yeah. So I'm going to use seven mana and oh, that two threshold <laughs> to play Ratinous Titan. Oh. It says Genesis, strike each enemy here. That is so nice. It's, it's going to clear out all of these minions because he's a six, four, four. D and a two. Does he die because I'm I ultimately end up doing ten damage combined? Back no, back. because ultimately I'm the only one in this scenario that's striking the minions. Because it actually says strike an enemy. Mm -hmm. There there is no attack or block, which would right. then require mine to hit at the same time. Got it. Mm -hmm. That that's huge, and it's an elite. See that again with the rarity kind of playing to the power level too. I think there there might be something there to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's crazy. Okay, so let me um, let me dispose of the bodies here. <laughs> um, I did notice that uh, I, I I never removed my little damage remembering dice here back when it that buffalo hit that one time we, mm -hmm. we should have removed that but just to call that out um and then unfortunately that's literally all i have i have no other tokens or minions on the field okay um so i'm gonna pass to you all right so i'm gonna get to do one of my favorite things to use the start ability on maelstrom mm -hmm. and i'm gonna actually pull your titan one step this way okay and I'm just going to tell the viewers, you kind of already know the plan. If I can keep you on water sites, then I can, like, you can move one, at, like, away. Let's say you moved back here. I could just keep pulling you back. Now, you could leave the water sites, and that won't, that won't fly um, unless I flood it. But my plan is to try to use the Maelstrom to keep this strong minion kind of from, like, moving all over the board. Mm -hmm. to attack me now remember that then uh the the minions can hit the site itself so it will will do, deal the damage to you that that is true i'm gonna take a spell and hope i get one that drowns it <laughs> oh no <laughs> um i'm gonna move my avatar up one mm -hmm. so that now your titan and is considered nearby that's correct 
I will then uh, cast a Frost Nova. It freezes nearby enemy minions. So it's not even targeting just the Titan. It would freeze any nearby minions. It happens to be the only one that's nearby. Mm -hmm. But I'll cast that for four. <laughs> and he, they're, they're now um, frozen. So I, I don't know if we want to mark it like this or actually tap it. It's uh, you can just keep it like that. That's fine. Okay, we'll we'll just remember that. Uh, and how long is that until my next turn? Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, I'll pass to your turn. Okay, I will untap. I will draw from the spell book. Tap my avatar and attack your site for one. Okay. Okay. So it just does one. You said. One damage, because uh, actually it's going to do two. Because uh, uh, you got that nearby. That site near you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So that that's the ability, if, for anybody who didn't remember, at the bottom of the avatar it says you have an extra power for every nearby site, which would be in this area here. Uh, oh, no. No, no. Your humble vigil. Oh, three. Yeah. Even though All it right. does more damage to me, I'm still going to call <laughs> it out. that Like, that's nearby. Like, nearby yep. is everything around it. Nine. Okay. And uh, pass turn to you. I'm going to bring the Kelpie up. That'll mm -hmm. count as the movement. I'm going to take this this little token here off of, or the counter or whatever you want to call it, off your Titan because they'll, they'll be unfrozen. I'm going to reset to my six mana and draw a spell. I'm going to cast... <laughs> Mega, Mega Amoeba? How do you say this? Thing? Oh, yeah, Mega Amoeba, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I can cast it out on any of my sites, but as it moves, it extends itself by leaving a piece of itself wherever it had walked prior on the board. So they're calling it a, it's leaving a pseudopod. That's the piece of itself. And it will actually occupy all locations that it has ever occupied. So as it leaves the piece of itself, it's technically growing. So it's actually becoming the size of all those pseudopods plus itself, the card, all combined. It's like one big creature. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, as that's happening, I'm getting one, plus one power for every uh, pseudopod that it left behind. I think what I want to do is cast it over here a little bit far away so that because I want to move it to make it grow bigger. It said it moves yeah. by extending a single pseudopod. I can't move with summoning sickness. So I would think it's just a zero right now. Right. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Okay. I don't think I want to use the avatar to flood anything. So I will tap it to draw a site. Sorry. Not, not spin all my sites, but draw one. <laughs> now I can't play it because I just used my tap ability here on the avatar to to draw it. I think it is now your turn. At one point we talked about how the precon decks are so well balanced that the games can actually take a lot longer. Oh four yeah. Four or five times longer than if we build our own decks that are really designed to be like maybe tighter combos. So just throwing it out there for anybody who's watching this long into it, if you are looking for that long drawn out, like grab a couple of drinks and some snacks and hang out for, and you want this like long strategy game. Oh, yeah. If if you're not looking for that long strategy game, maybe either augment one of the uh, pre-con decks with like some faster combos or some, maybe some more powerful cards, take out some weaker ones or build your own deck from scratch. And I've been told I've only played with pre-cons, but I've been told by uh, judges that when you play with those um, faster decks, like they really, they can really get faster. Like what, what's one of the faster games you've played? 10 like? minutes. So there, there you go. So I untapped. I'm going to draw from the Atlas. I am going to tap my avatar of Earth and play a humble village. I am not going to utilize the Genesis effect, so I will go to eight. And with eight mana, I am going to play a Midland army. Oh, that looks powerful. <laughs> so it says tap target a loc uh, target a location up to three steps away. Deal four damage to each unit there. <laughs> Death right summon a foot soldier token to each adjacent location. 
So uh, I understand what tap means to trigger mm-hmm. that first ability. What does death right mean? Death right is just like the the Genesis ability, but now it's but leaving the, the cemetery, right? Ah. So then I would summon uh, a foot soldier token. Okay. Token. 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 That makes sense. So that was eight. Uh, so now I'm going to hit you with the Titan for six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm down to three. Getting I'm going to pass turn. I'm getting close <laughs> to death's door. Okay, so I am going to play a site. Uh, I'm gonna. I guess I'll drop it here. I'm going to use the Genesis, staying within the body of water, move a target one step. I think I have discovered that the move I used my Maelstrom for was not a good one because I put your Titan right on my site and you, and you haven't even moved it to a, mm-hmm. to attack my avatar or anything, and you, you've just been sitting here attacking it. So I feel like I'm going to use this Genesis because this flooded site is still within the body of water here on grid number seven and move you right. back. Very good. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm undoing a move that I did previously, but I do have seven mana now. Let's pull up a spell. With Ice Lance, can I deal the three different damages to one target? No. It, it still stands. Yeah, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Because what's interesting is like if the unit doesn't die, it's 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 within the first three locations still. Oh yeah. Right? Like it's it's not mm-hmm. out of the way yet. So I would I would think you could just keep hitting <laughs> it until it's gone, right? Right. Um, is that one of those we're not hundred percent sure? Uh, yeah, I'm from yeah, I'm gonna go with that uh, okay. option number two, not hundred percent sure. Okay. If anyone watches this that knows they could tell us and then we'll learn from that. Uh, we'll go with that. I won't use it for that because your your creatures are uh, so powerful it wouldn't matter to hit them. But your avatar is sitting there, which I could hit. But if I can't hit the avatar for all three of those, I, I would just hit it for the first three, and then the other two wouldn't wouldn't do anything. I, I think that's how it does go. I'm not 100% sure. We'll go with that, because I don't have a whole lot to do right now anyway, so <laughs> I'll just hit your avatar for three. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'll spend three here. Uh, and it'll just shoot line of sight over to your avatar. And, uh, oh, was I even able to do that because it's tapped? Or that's okay because the, the magic ability is... Yeah, the, yeah, it's, yeah you, it's not and it's not asking it's not, you to It's tap, not a move so. or an attack. It's a, right. it's a magic spell. Okay. I am also then going to move the Kelpie over one and attack for three. So now you're down to four. I got through. So we're, we're both getting a little close to death's door here. I cannot do anything else, so I will pass to you. I will draw from the spell book. I've got eight. Oh, Diana. crap. Oh, your pseudopod. I didn't yeah. move my pseudopod. I just realized. Oh, go ahead and move it. Just to show people it. Yeah, I for sure. Normally, I wouldn't. That that would have been a, a, a misplay or whatever you want to call it. Where yeah. did you pull these tokens from, by the way? Uh, they are all the way on the side. There are pseudopods right there. Ah, okay. I'm, I'm going to bring some of these over. All right. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, you're good. Um, and then I think I'm just gonna tap my Titan to come back into your site and hit you for six. Okay, so now I'm down to zero, so we don't go negative. Mm-hmm. I'm officially on Death's Door, but you cannot do your final blow to my avatar this turn. Right. I okay. can't. I can't wheel my cat or my yeah my catapults in there to hit you or the spear um, or this or spear. Nothing. Okay. So. You know, let's just have some fun. So we'll use the ability, which is tap, target a location up to three steps away, deal four damage to each unit there. So one, two. Ah. So I'm going to target your Kelpie and take Kelpie's it out. dead. <laughs> and why not? With uh, we got eight mana, we'll use five. We'll go down to three. We'll play a Queen of the Midland here. And she says, after an opponent draws a card, if they have more cards than you, you may draw a card. Ah, okay. I'm going to pass turn to you. Okay, this is going to get tricky. I don't know if I can survive this round, but I have a couple thoughts. So for my upkeep with the Maelstrom, I'm going to pull your avatar one to the left Mm -hmm. because I want to get you away from the line of sight so that you can't throw mm. your spear at me. I'm also going to do the... I'm going to pull the avatar uh, down one 
so that it's also not directly next to your Midland army. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that, that buys me like one more round of survival. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe not, but <laughs> it's one of the only things I can think of doing at the moment. I'm going to pull a site. Yeah. So and then, since he pulled a site and he's got more cards than me, you get to pull uh, a card. Yep. Queen of Midland is going to trigger. Okay. And I'm just going to draw a spell. Pull okay. a card. I am going to tap the avatar to play uh, a site here in grid 20. This Genesis has a threshold to it. It's the first one we saw with a threshold that I played at least that requires at least three other water sites. That's the upside down triangle that's blue. I obviously mm -hmm. do have that many. I meet the threshold. I can summon three frog tokens there. Something that has the ability of submerge doesn't mean it has to come in submerge. It's your choice. But because they're being right. summoned this way, that makes sense. I want to play the Kraken. Ooh. It has submerge. It also has this ability to tap, and then it will surface to strike each other unit nearby. So I believe in order for that to work, it, it cannot already be surfaced. I'd have right. to bring it in submerged and then surface it, and then right. that does the strike. It says nearby unit. So it could hit an avatar. It could hit a minion. Does that also mean mine? Mm-hmm. So when it says each other, so I, sh I probably shouldn't put it right next to my <laughs> own thing is what you're saying. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, that, that's a good call. That's good for, especially for people learning. It doesn't say each other enemy unit nearby. That's right. each other unit. So if I put it here, I'm safe. Yep. Keep that submerged. Now, I've, I've got no mana. The only thing I want you and the viewers to be mindful is uh, if you hover over Midland Army, it's a uh, tap. And then it says target a location up to three steps away. Yeah. So me. one, two, three. So that that's actually mm -hmm. a pretty good range. I know it doesn't use the range keyword there. Right. Um, but it, it's specifically saying three steps away. Does that mean I could still do a, def a block? Because it says deal damage. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I'm going to go this way with it. So I think that taps it too, though, because that's like kind of considered uh, moving. I don't think I can do anything else. So it's your turn. I'm going to untap, untap. I am going to draw from the spell book. Yeah, I'm just going to use my avatar to check the Spear of Destiny at the Moeba. Okay. Spear Which of would Destiny drops all of there. The, yeah, all the take all these other guys. Okay. <laughs> I see what you're doing now. I'm going to my Midland Army to target this site targeting these uh, yeah, it, and because I don't like these frogs can't do the block, right? That's my final death blow. Mm -hmm. That's right? the final death blow. Correct. Ah, <laughs> Avatar is in the graveyard. Good game, man. That was fun. That was awesome. Oh yeah. Do you want to go ahead and plug uh, some of your stuff? Yeah, uh, I'm Mike with Mean Mugging in Games, and primarily I uh, I do indie TCG video content. And primarily right now, it's uh, exclusively on Sorcery and Cryptic. Awesome. Well, thanks, Mike. Really appreciate you teaching me. Really appreciate the time. If you guys want to chat with me between videos, you can head out to my Discord. I've got a link at tezbasement.com that will invite you to the Discord if you're not there already. I do have a Sorcery playlist, which I will put in this video description below. It's got some cool sorcery shorts. It's got uh, some interviews with Eric, the creator of the game. If you guys haven't seen it, check it out. And I know a lot of people have seen the first one, but about half as many people have seen part two. So if you guys haven't seen that, give that a, a look over. Thanks again, everybody, for watching. And thank you again, Mike. Thank you, Ted. Appreciate it. Peace. Peace out.